Good morning. Last week, Hamas substantially increased its rocket and mortar attacks on the people of Israel. Hamas has once again shown its true colors as a terrorist organization that refuses to even recognize Israel's right to exist. In order for the violence to stop, Hamas must stop firing rockets into Israel and agree to respect a sustainable and durable ceasefire. That is the objective to which all parties need to be working, and that is what the United States is working towards. We also remain concerned about the humanitarian situation for the people of Gaza. We ask that all parties involved to allow food and medical supplies to reach the people there. We appreciate the efforts of a variety of countries in the region who are working to help the humanitarian needs of the people of Gaza. The discussions uh, that we've had with the Israelis are ones that uh, uh, everyone needs to uh, recognize what the ultimate goal here is, to get to a ceasefire. Um, I can't speak to any potential uh, ground operation. Um, I think that any ground operation, according to the Israelis, would be part and parcel of the, of the overall operation, given their statements. Uh, saying that they don't want to retake Gaza, that they simply want to protect their people. So uh, we'll just have to see how this unfolds. Um, obviously, as I've said, we don't want them, we want civilian casualties to be uh, avoided. Um, but it's unfortunate as Hamas, as we've seen in the past, tends to base its people and some of its rockets in civilian areas. So we'll see. Thank you, Ibrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We Americans have a moral responsibility to be part of that change and ask America to exercise its leverage and tell Israel there is no blank check. Israel has to comply with international law. Israel has to respect the sanctity of human lives. And Israel has to respect its allies. And America has to show leadership, a new leadership. And the team of Barack Obama should not repeat the mistakes of George Bush and even Bill Clinton. We need new change, and we need to exercise pressure on Israel. As much as we can, we try to avoid it, and really, our heart aches for every child, every innocent person that uh, is being killed or uh, injured. But these casualties are only, and their blood is only on the hands of Hamas. The scale of this suggests that this is not just a reaction, it's really a strategic move uh, to change the name of the game between Israel and Hamas. Um, and it suggests that a ceasefire is unlikely in the short term. There's too much bloodshed. Uh, Hamas is likely to retaliate. Uh, they're both operating in the shadow of the Israeli elections in February and also a crisis of legitimacy in Palestine in January when the term of President Mahmoud Abbas as president of the Palestinian Authority expires, uh, and there is no new election for a new president. And so that legitimacy is going to be challenged by Hamas and some in the Palestinian public. So all of that suggests that uh, this is a move that is a big move. And yes, it does probably uh, uh, tie into uh, the transition in the U.S.